Good morning, beloved. Good morning. Today we celebrate the Epiphany Sunday. We're looking at um, really the same what, overarching theme we've been focusing on for a couple weeks now. These themes throughout Advent of promise and fulfillment. God making so many promises to us through the Old Testament regarding our salvation and our, our invitation for divine adoption to be His children. And then Him fulfilling these these promises to us through the birth, the life, the passion, death, resurrection of Jesus Christ, uh, even the uh, second coming of Jesus Christ. There's, so there's still promises yet to be fulfilled that God has made that He's going to fulfill and make as we draw nearer to the second coming of Christ, whenever that is. But today's promises focus us on the great revelation that, that we heard in the, in the first reading and that Paul focuses on in the second reading. And that of that, that not just the Jews, but every people, all people of every nation are invited to become children of God. Or in a sense, salvation is offered to everyone who wants to accept it. So when we say salvation, salvation means becoming a child of God. To become saved means to become a child of God. That's what John taught us on Christmas morning in John chapter 1 when he said, To all who accept Him, who accept Jesus the Messiah, He gives them power to become children of God. And so that's what salvation is. Salvation is, is becoming a child of God. Uh, and, and we see this one time, it's, it's mentioned, just today in the first reading, but other times in the Old Testament too. Um, here it is through Isaiah the prophet, this promise that all these different people from all these different nations, even different kings, will be coming to Jerusalem to offer God gold, frankincense, and praises of the Lord. So all these different people from all over will be coming to basically offer their lives through gold, frankincense, and to offer sacrifice and worship and praise to God. So they see this finally being fulfilled, or beginning to be fulfilled, through these three magi that come today. The three magi, the three wise men, the three kings. They are the representatives of all the different nations coming for the first time to offer gold, frankincense, myrrh, praise, worship, homage to Jesus the Messiah. So you and I, we, today we follow in their example when we gather together to worship, to offer, offer our lives through our time, talent, and treasure, uh, to offer our lives, as we'll see, through uh, the giving of our gold, frankincense, and myrrh, to offer our lives through praise and worship and sacrifice at the Holy Mass. Every time we gather, we're imitating and following the example of these three magi who begun this for, the, for all the Gentiles. So let's step through and look at this a little more deeply, uh, this, this promise being fulfilled a little more deeply, but also point out a couple other principles we've seen along the way and we've been talking about the last couple weeks as well. So we see in uh, the beginning, Matthew says, When Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judah in the days of King Herod, so he's just setting the historical context here, Behold, Magi from the east arrived in Jerusalem and saying, where is the newborn king of the Jews? We saw his star at its rising and have come to do him homage. So right away we see and we're reminded how the, the uh, Magi are watching the signs of the times, huh? In the context with, of God's scripture. So looking at the signs of the times around them in the present moment in the context of what God has said in the Holy Scriptures. Think about that. They know the stars in the sky so well that they recognize when a new star comes up. That's pretty intense, huh? And they, and not only that, but then they recognize, cause, so it was, it, was, it was seen back then, if a new star arose in the sky, that was the sign that a new king had been born somewhere on the earth. So they see that connection, that new thing happening in the world around them, and they connect it with the scriptures. Remember, we, we saw in the scriptures a few weeks ago, how in, in the book of Numbers, how Balaam the prophet had made the prophecy or the promise from God that a new star would rise up in Jerusalem, representing a new king who would be on the throne of David forever. So they recognize that this new star is a newborn king, and from the scriptures they recognize this newborn king is for the Jews. And so where do they go? To Jerusalem, the capital. They say, hey, where is he? What's going on? Now they probably go there expecting everyone to be watching this, and everyone to be aware of this, and everyone to be 
worshiping this newborn king and paying homage to him. But they go there and they say, where is the newborn king? We saw his star. We're here to worship him with you. And they all drop their jaws, right? What? What newborn king? <laughs> A star? They, you know, they missed something. So, King Herod is greatly troubled, all Jerusalem with him. So King Herod assembles all the chief priests, all the scribes of the people, and inquires of them, Okay, where is the Christ to be born? Where is the Messiah to be born? Interesting that all they do is say, Where is the newborn king of the Jews? And right away, everybody here, is, especially King Herod, is thinking, Messiah. Where is the Messiah? Not just any other king, but the king, the King Messiah. So he asks them, Where is the Messiah going to be born? Notice they have a checklist. In Bethlehem of Judah. For thus it is written through the prophet. And they give the prophecy, they give the promise in the Old Testament that shows that the Messiah King will be born in Bethlehem. So they've got their checklist, right, of who, who of things that the authentic Messiah must fulfill to be the authentic Messiah. So one, he must be born in Bethlehem. Right, so some other guy comes around, says that he's Messiah. Where were you born? Not Bethlehem? Nah, see you later. False Messiah, right? It has to be from Judah, from the tribe of Judah, we said already. So some other guy comes around from a different tribe. They say, where are you from? You from a tribe of Judah? No? Okay, false Messiah. Right, they have their checklist. And anybody who comes around, they're sort of watching and waiting with eager expectation. Does he fulfill the checklist, the requirements that God has given us through the scriptures. Uh, you know, somebody came to me a couple years ago one time there. She was, she was really worried. She, she felt like she was missing um, the second coming of Jesus, that it was happening in our midst already. She was missing it. And I said, what are you talking about? And so she said, well, there's this, there's this guy. It's really popular. He's in the Philippines. And he's got a big following. He's been doing miracles. And he said he's Jesus the Messiah returning again. And, and, and I, I think I was supposed to, to go there or something or to be following him. And I said, well, I said, well, I never heard of this at all. So I said, well, so, uh, well let's just think here. So he, in the Philippines, so he's Filipino. She said, yeah. And I said, okay, he's not the Messiah. How do you know? I can be so sure. I said, well, Jesus isn't Filipino. He's Jewish. He's Middle Eastern. And she just stared at me. Never thought that, you know? The eternal, resurrected, immortal, unchangeable body of our risen Lord Jesus Christ is Jewish, Middle Eastern. I would like him to be Mediterranean, Italian. But no, he's Middle Eastern. You know, it's, these are part of the things on our checklist, right? Somebody else comes to be claimed to be the Messiah. If they're not even at least Jewish and Middle Eastern, you're not the one. Move on, right? So they've got their checklist. King Herod calls the Magi secretly and ascertains from them the time of the star's appearance. In other words, let's see how old probably is the Messiah by now. How old is this king, this child? Now we know that that he sends people later on. He sends. Uh, people out to Bethlehem and all the vicinity to kill all the children two years old and under. So that tells us Jesus is anywhere from uh, anywhere up to two years old maximum at this time. He, he sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and search diligently for the child. When you find him, bring me word that I may go also and do him homage. And so they leave the king's presence and they go and the star that they saw at its rising precedes them and stops over the place where the child was. On entering the house, on entering the house, there goes all of our nativity scenes, huh? There's no more stable, there's no more manger, there's no more cave, you know, with the three wise men. The three wise men, by the time they get here, they're in a house. You know what Mary said probably, Joseph, you get me in the house, or I might have to lose my sinlessness, huh? <laughs> huh? He gets her in a house, right? They get in the house. On entering the house, they see the child with his mother. So, so we're getting the right context here. 
By the time the, the Magi get there, they're in a house, they get into the house and they see Jesus. He's anywhere, probably up to two years old maximum. What's that mean? He's probably running around naked like all little boys and girls do, right? Just running around causing chaos. And Mary's trying to get a hold of him. Get over here, Jesus. <laughs> they see the child with Mary and they do him homage. They prostrate themselves and then they open up their treasures and give him gifts. Gold, frankincense, and myrrh. Now what they're doing is they are responding to God's call, to God's invitation to become children of God. They're, they're telling Jesus, you are our King, our Messiah. You're, our, you're my Messiah. And, and to show it, to prove it by action, here's the gift of my life. You know, we give the gift of our life through, through, the off, through the money during the offering time at the Mass. That's a, that's a sign, the symbol of, our, of the gift of our life to God as we're here to worship Him. That's what they're doing too. They're giving the gift of their life to Jesus, their Messiah, and they give Him gold, for, for He's a King. Frankincense, for He's a priest. He's going to be a priest, the High Priest. And myrrh, to represent His death. Now, frankincense always represents prayers, the prayers of God's faithful people. Um, so, Revelations tells us in many, a couple of different times that when the, the angels of God take the, take the incense to God, to the throne of God, and the incense is the prayers of God's holy people. So, for, if you've ever been to a funeral, a Catholic funeral, and we've got the, the, the casket or the cremains up here, and the priest goes around in a circle with the incense, He's not just, it's not just for show because it like, looks good or because it smells great or because he wants to make everybody cough, you know. The incense, he, that's the sign that he, he, right before that he usually says something about let us, let us silently offer our prayers for our loved one here. And then he incenses around our loved one. It's a sign that all of our prayers are surrounding our loved one and going up to heaven to the throne of God our prayers accompanying our loved one to the, he to the heavenly throne of God. So frankincense, incense is always a sign of our prayers. Myrrh, the sign of death. So, so one of the points to focus on today is these three Gentiles, non-Jews, are coming to uh, accept Jesus as their Messiah so they can receive power to become children of God. And as they go to accept Jesus as their Messiah, they're giving their lives to Him through these symbols of gold, frankincense and myrrh, and how can you and I follow their example today? Maybe we go, maybe we have to take uh, a step and offer God more, uh, offer God gold, our gold, our money. Maybe we're holding that back from Him. Most of the people here, uh, I can say, are probably not, because we have a small community and somehow we're still going. We have a pretty generous community. But some people might be hung up on this. Uh, uh, I know one time there was a pastor who was preaching and telling how he had um, one of the things he was doing to practice generosity was any change he ever had in his pocket from a store or from wherever, he would, when he could, leave it uh, on a corner or by a bus stop or somewhere where like a, a homeless person would usually come by and they could grab the change and have the change that way. And so uh, another pastor was listening to this pastor do the preaching and said, that's a good idea, you know, very practical, I'm going to try that too. And so he, he tried it, he put this change down his pocket, down by the bus stop, and was walking away. And then he said, he, all of a sudden he, he, his, his body just started shaking and he started sweating. And he was looking back at the money and, and he realized, yeah, I got a problem. I, that's a hard for me to leave that money down there and not know what's going to happen to it. And so some, that might be true of some of us today. We have a hard time leaving some, some money down and not being in control with it. it isn't, it's not our, the hard, sometimes that's, for me, that's the hard part of, of giving money to someone on the street corner or something because I'm like, well, what are you going to do with this money, huh? I don't want you just to go buy drugs and alcohol with it. I want you to go buy food or something that's really going to help you, you know? Uh, to actually be able to give without strings attached. You know, that's true, pure generosity. That's what God is after with our hearts. So maybe God's calling us to give our gold in some way like that where we can Go, grow into that true, uh, no strings attached generosity. 
incense, offering our prayers. Maybe, first of all, we should make sure we have a daily prayer time with God every day. If we don't have a daily prayer time with God, this is a good way. We can, we can accept God as our, accept Jesus as our Messiah in a deeper way through our prayers by making sure we have a set appointment every day with God where we're in conversation with God, inviting Him every day. You're my Messiah. You're my King. You're my Savior. I need you to be my healer today. Well, maybe we just maybe we intensify our prayer. Maybe we center our prayer and focus our prayer. Today on the third is also if it wasn't Sunday, we'd be celebrating the holy name of Jesus. Today is the holy name of Jesus, January third, and that is a beautiful prayer in itself. Just the Jesus prayer, just praying slowly Jesus' name, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. You know when someone you love, someone and they love you. And they say your name with great tenderness and joy. Doesn't it feel good inside? <laughs> you know? And how much do you think God feels that way with just you and I? People he loves say his name with tenderness, with love inside our hearts. And so that's a powerful prayer for us, a centering prayer. Uh, when we're in, in the midst of temptation, sometimes if you just back off and focus on Jesus, 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 you know, there goes the temptation. <laughs> or you receive strength to resist it by the power of the name of Jesus. Myrrh, the sign of death. And so, you know, not only offering our life to God, but our, our death to God, our time, our place, our way of dying, but in a sense, just practically offering little acts of self-denial every day is offering our myrrh to God. Just, and it's what Jesus asked us for, right? He said, if you want to be my disciple, de every day deny yourself. Pick up your cross and then follow me. And so just these little acts of self-denial every day of, of practicing um, Christian discipline is a way of we offering our myrrh to God. And all of these gifts, any gift we offer to God, what we're saying to Him is, I accept you as my Messiah King. And so I offer you my life. I'm living my life for you because you are my King. Father, we just thank you so much for all your truth and the Holy Scriptures and the examples of all the men and women in the Scriptures that you give us uh, on how to become your children and live as a disciple of Jesus. And we just pray you'd impart to us today through the power of your Holy Spirit um, creative ways that we can offer you more of our lives by offering gold, frankincense, or myrrh to you so that you can be our Messiah King and that we can be filled all the more with the power to become children of God. We pray these things through the most holy name of Jesus. Amen.